Welcome to the Fin Hub Show, the one NFL podcast you can't leave off your roster. Now, here's your host, Joe and Kevin DeHale. All right, all right, all right. Welcome in, guys, and good morning. Happy Monday to you all. It is season one, episode six of the Fin Hub Show. Another week for you guys here. Today, we are joined by Anthony, and we have a good episode lined up for you guys today. Anthony, how's your day been so far? Pretty good, pretty good. Went to the gym with the boys this morning. Yeah. Right in. Yeah, they kicked so, our asses. <laughs> it's a rainy <laughs> Sunday, but happy to be back and uh, happy to give you guys uh, a little content this, this morning. Yeah. Kevin, how you been today? Good, good. Just chilling. Uh, this weather's got me down, but fuck it. We're good. <laughs> yeah, Another day, huh? It's a good day to have a good day. Yeah. So um, before we get into some NFL talk and Miami Dolphins news, Let's talk about this whole deal with Paul George possibly going to the Golden State Warriors. Looks like he's been trying to find his super team, and you'd think they have that in the Clippers with Kawhi, Paul George, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden, but couldn't get over the hump with that team. So could he be going to the Golden State Warriors to join Steph Curry? Yeah, I don't I don't think it's about finding a new team. I think it's about the money. So mm. I, I think the Clippers are only willing to give him a three-year deal which he wants a four-year max. So I guess that's why he's opting out, and he, he wants to become a free agent, decide between a few teams. I mean, it's the Magic, the Warriors, and the 76ers. So who do, you, who do you think will be the best team as far as, like, throwing him on one of those squads? For Paul George? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you ask me personally, I think the best thing for him is Miami Heat. Oh, oh yeah. That's okay. It. That's it. Sure, That'd be those nice. Guys. He's got to come down to Miami. He's got to take his time down to South Beach. I mean, personally, it, I I would love to see him playing with Jimmy Butler. You know, if he started playing with Jimmy, I think uh, would would add a lot more length to, to the offense, more defense. I mean, they're both about the same age. They're both thirty four years old, by the way. Damn. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. But uh, but I don't know. What do you think? I don't know if that's the direction I would want to go in. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> uh, I, I don't think he's gonna bring a, take us over the hump. But he, he would, it would be interesting. I just don't think that he's worth a max contract, right? I don't think okay, he's... Okay, but let me ask you this. Hot yeah. take. Sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. Who do you think is better? Jimmy Butler or Paul George? That's a good question, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with Jimmy Butler right now. What about you, Kevin? I mean, it's... I, I want to say Paul George, but the only thing I would say about Jimmy is, you know, playoff Jimmy which we, di we didn't even get to experience that right. last year. But as far as the better player, I would say Paul George. I mean, okay. he's offensively, he, he's got a bigger bag. And I think also he, he's not as good on defense as Jimmy, in my opinion, but he's he could be just as good or better. I mean, I don't know. That's just my opinion. But, I mean, he's right there when it comes down to that. But how right. about you? Right. So, I mean, just to, just to give you a little comparison of as far as stats go, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, last two years, this is Jimmy Butler. Let's start, with, let's start off with him. Mind you, the most games he's played in the last, what, eight years, it seems, is 65 games. Let's start off with that. So, Jimmy Butler kind of coasts through the season. Yeah. As we kind of know, right? Listen, I love Jimmy. Jimmy's, Jimmy's brought us to the finals, what, two years in the last four? Yeah. yeah. You know, that's huge. Don't, don't sleep on, on, uh, on the culture heat, right? But... Let's look, let's, let's dig a little deeper in the numbers. I mean, points per game. He's at, uh, he's currently anywhere between 20 to 22 points a game, which is kind of similar to Paul George. Paul George just have, has a lot, of, a lot more, you know, consistency and continuity scoring throughout mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. his career. I mean, let's look at the last four years. 20.8 points per game, 22.9 points per game, 21.4, 21.5. That's solid. Yeah, solid. But mind you, that's him being also what a one A one B option. Yeah, on a team, you know where does Paul George fall in that roster? You just said, you, yeah. You, you just named what uh, Another. Russell Westbrook, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden. Yeah. yeah, I mean he's putting up what? Let me see Paul George numbers here. We got him at twenty two point six points per game, 
uh, this past season, 23.8 the season before, 24.3 the season before. Yeah, he's a he's a better scorer. I'll give him Definitely that. Definitely better scorer. Yeah, and in OKC, he averaged like 28, oh, something yeah. like that, right? Oh, so, yeah. And that was in, what, 2018? Right, 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 right. That's why, since I like the way he scores, I, I would I would love to see him. It would be cool to see him with Jimmy. Right? Yeah. Because Jimmy's not really a scorer. He's not. He's not. He's just a – he's. It sounds stupid. He's a dog, especially in the right. playoffs. He's like he's gonna grind it out and get you right. like much needed buckets. Right. But right. but yeah, Paul George would look nice on this team though. I, honestly, I'm, I'm just saying, man. I don't know if you get, if there's space for him and Jimmy Butler though. If I'm being honest, no, you don't think so. I you don't know, think so. You know, you know, you know, you know, Paul George played a lot of, a lot of years in the shooting guard position, and and uh, or small forward. I mean, we could shift them either way. You know, yeah. so I, I'm yeah, just they, saying they're both cool. interchangeable. I think they can both each play shooting guard or small forwards. So. I just think financially, it's it's. I don't think it's more. It's about the positions. I think financially, the Heat are just pretty strapped with Tyler Hero yeah. and Duncan Robinson. Um, I mean, if okay, but how about if you can flip that to get Paul George? Would I you think do that? I think that's nice. I think that's nice. I mean, then again, it's it's also being tied to that player for the next four years on a max contract. It's kind of it's kind of a risk because it's like what he'll be like thirty eight by the by the time that contract's up. So, yeah, I mean, this could be said about both players. I mean, they're both towards you know the latter portion of their careers. Yeah, you know, yeah. We don't know what, what version of Jimmy we're gonna get next year. We don't know you know how Paul George will look next year either. So it's, it's, I think it's a gamble on both. But yeah, we'll see what happens there. Yeah, well, no, no, for sure. Moving on from the NBA, let's get back in, into some uh, yeah. Miami Dolphins talk. So. It's going to be year three under Mike McDaniel. The Dolphins have improved every year since he's been here. So do you guys expect for the offense to take another step forward this season? And how would that look like? Right. I mean, I, I think we definitely I think we definitely got better this, this offseason for sure. I mean, our, our offense specifically, we uh, I think we upgraded at the center position more or less. You know, or well, at least he's healthy. He's healthy, right? Yeah, I'll, yeah. T- I'll take health at this point, right? I mean, we, we did a, we did add on OBJ. We did pick up or draft a new running back, which looks uh, looks pretty quick to me. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So not but, to mention we also got Jonu Smith. So that's another guy. Jonu Smith. Yeah, I mean that's one of my guys. I mean, I, I he's. I think I said the last time when, when I was last on, he's my favorite addition this off season, and I'm excited to see him play. So the only thing you can argue about us not taking that leap, right, not being better this year offensively, would be the guard position because we didn't really upgrade there. We, In fact, we got worse, right. you know, losing um, Robert Hunt. But, you know, Isaiah Wynn coming back and uh, I guess Liam Eikenberg coming in, hopefully, I mean, it's it's a lot to ask for, but for him to take another step, if if he can do that, I do see this team – being a lot better obviously the you know the additions are are easy to see it's obj john smith uh rookie running back jalen Wright. but i think so i've heard a lot of people talk about the guard position right and like the fact that we haven't upgraded it so it's like kind of a concern for them Mm -hmm. but i think the dolphins aren't concerned about that position and and it has to do with the way the scheme is Mm -hmm. you know we're we're a, a we get the ball off extremely quick, the fastest in the NFL, right? So I think the guard position isn't as important as people think it is. So, and and I, I personally, I'm, I'm not saying I agree with it, but I don't think the Dolphins value that position as much as everyone else does, right? Right. And it has to do with, uh, with the offense. It's the scheme entirely. So as long as we have good guards that can block downfield, and I'm saying mostly for the running game, I don't think it's as as much of a concern as everyone else sees it. So. Yeah, and it would have been nice to have Connor Williams come back, but it doesn't look like he's interested in joining the Dolphins. I think it's because he wanted to... He wants to play center. He wants to play center, and yeah. we would have been moving him back over to guard since we picked up center Aaron Brewer, like you were saying. And you don't think... Uh, so So you would probably think that Connor Williams is a little better than Aaron Brewer? Aaron Brewer? <laughs> I'd like to think. I think Aaron... I, I would say that Connor Williams is a better center. Sure. At the moment, sure. But that we could be proved wrong. When we when we picked up Connor Williams from the Cowboys, he was a guard, and we transitioned him over to a center. He was a guard and a, a tackle. I would say that, yeah. So I would say that 
our offensive line coach had a lot to do with that. And right. maybe that's something that we can bring to Aaron Brewer, I, I believe. I'm not sure. Kevin, you can fact check me on this. That Aaron Brewer's first season as a center was last year. And that's that was his best season. I think last year was his first like full season. I think the year before that, he was he played, played a little bit of center. center. Yeah, yeah. He but he's he was thrown all over the line. I, I think he, he played left guard, right guard, and center. But he was most serviceable as a center. Yeah. Uh, so well last year, yeah. So that, who knows? Last year was his first full year at center and he was he was great. I so mean, maybe our offensive line coach coach can get the most out of Aaron Brewer the same way we did with Connor Williams. It would have been nice to have Connor Williams come back and play guard for us. And I know that Drew Rosenhaus is, is saying that uh, his agent is saying that Connor Williams is back and he's made a miraculous recovery. But there was also this report that he had lost like 90 pounds. So well, to, to add on, because I looked it up now, and he started his NFL career in 2020 at center. Mm -hmm. I don't think he really played much, though. And then they moved him to... Then spent two seasons at guard, and then was a center again in 2023. Okay. So last year, he... he and apparently, he's really good at run blocking. No, he's fantastic. And, and getting downfield, and, and he's an athletic... I think he's smaller, but he's a he's a, he's a he's an athletic center. Well, so. I think that's that's exactly what they brought him in for. I think it's his... You know, him blocking in the run game. I don't think it's his pass pro, because it's not anything special. So then... It looks like what the Dolphins are trying to step up this season would be the run game, mm -hmm. and they're going to have a new wrinkle in the offense when, when it comes to the tight ends, bringing in a guy like Jonu Smith and even Jody Fortson, who a lot of people don't have making the roster because of Julian Hill and his blocking ability, but let's see how that goes, too. I think also, you know, getting getting a guy like Aaron Brewer, he's, he's very versatile. He's played in college every single position on the line, mm -hmm. so... I mean, just just that alone, it's it's a lot more valuable than a guy like Connor Williams. Yeah, but that, Liam Eikenberg has also played every single position. <laughs> That's not well. I mean, but but has Liam Liam Eikenberg had the same success as Aaron Brewer? Hopefully, even he can one find season. It this season, you know. And I'm yeah. not saying Aaron Brewer is one of the best centers in the league, but I mean, there's a reason why we paid him seven mil a year. Yeah. You know? All I can say is I saw a whole lot of miss snaps. Last yeah. season, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we we're at least definitely top five and and have and, and committing the most errors in that category. Uh, as, as long as you don't see that again this year, I think that's a step in the right direction. Well, right, well, that's actually a really good point. Just that alone, if Aaron Brewer brings you more consistency with at least just getting two of the ball, like a, a decent snap, I think that alone is is it's warranted, right, to get rid of him. Yeah, and I, I understand he's he was injured, so. All of a sudden, he's made this miraculous recovery, right? Now he's going to be ready for training camp. When a couple months ago, they were saying his career might even be over. Like, it was that bad yeah, of an injury. It was, so it, It's a weird situation. It might It might even... I mean, I don't know if it's probably not... Either way, they're going to end up doing a physical, whoever decides to sign him. But it might even be like a little cash grab just to get his name out there. It's his agent's job to yeah. make him look good, too, and say he's made a miraculous recovery. Yeah. So we don't really know the state of Connor Williams right now. All we have is what his agent says. So, I mean, question, though, because we would like to stash him on the roster, right? Maybe mm -hmm. even have him with us for a year on a cheap deal. Maybe, he's, maybe he is good by... Connor? The, yeah. Okay. By the middle of the year. Uh, do you guys think that it would be a good idea to bring him in or i think it would be a great idea but i don't it's not gonna happen doubt it yeah doubt it's it, not right. it's not gonna happen he yeah. wants to play center because I, I i believe at this point even though we just saw robert hunt make a lot of money at guard and that number seems to be going up the guy that's touching the ball in every single play is also aside from the quarterback is the center yeah so it is an important position and connor williams isn't stupid he realizes that Man, but I think if the if the Dolphins can can talk to him, right? And I, and I know this is I, ideal, right? But if they can tell him, look, we'll have you in as a backup left guard and backup center. You you've seen it. You've been here for the last couple of years, right? You've seen that players are constantly going down, including yourself. Odds are you're gonna you're gonna have an opportunity to get on the field, but in the meantime, you're staying in the same uh, situation. The same offense, you 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 know this offense already. So you're kind of, you get that one year to prove that you're good, that you're healthy, and then you can go on and sign with another team, or maybe stay with us. Okay, but if on. his situation was so bad that he was considering retiring, this might be his last opportunity to make some money. So this that's probably why he's like, look, I, but I need th to. There's a reason why he hasn't signed yet, because no one's gonna 
be willing to sign what he wants. Which he was looking for like 13 mil a year before he got injured, which thank God we didn't do that extension that he was holding out for last season, remember? That was tough. We would have been screwed. Mm -hmm. We would have been tied down to what, $13 million a year for a player that's probably not going to be ready at all. So, Well, also going back to Anthony's point with drafting the running back, Jalen Wright, Mm -hmm. apparently he's also a really good, um, he's also really good at blocking too. So that's another really cool thing that the Dolphins have added. Yeah. And does that mean that maybe now bringing in a guy like Jalen Wright and then us also hearing things about moving Devon over to some time, playing some time at wide receiver, is it because of Jalen Wright that we're allowing that to happen? I, I that's think, really interesting. I think that that plays a, a factor in there, right? Because, you know, obviously last year it was basically Raheem and Devon Achan, right? Mm-hmm. It was like a two-headed monster. And and even then, Devon Achan was hurt so many times. So now bringing in this guy, you can you can kind of play around and, th- and throw Achan all over the field. And I think he would be really valuable in, you know, in the passing attack. So what do you think, Anthony? I mean, listen, uh, I, I'm just trying to think back at, McDaniel back back in when he was in San Francisco. So they had Brandon Ayuk mm-hmm. and the second guy was a stud. I just, his name Debo? Was stud. Debo. Debo Samuel. Yeah. Come on. I, I, I think he wants to try to unlock that Debo Samuel within Dev- Devon A-Chain. Mm-hmm. I think uh, if, if we can get just a slither of that, mm-hmm. that's, it's worth, uh, worth would a you, gamble. Would you think that, because uh, we, we've talked about this, Eric Azukama, would you think that oh, maybe he... Do you think that maybe he's like the Debo Samuel type? I mean, that, I would that like we're looking to, for. I mean, I would like to say so. I just feel like we haven't really seen him play much right now in a crowded in a crowded wide receiver room. Let's see if he if he, if he even gets on the field right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he had he had basically like a red shirt season, his his rookie season. Then last year, unfortunately, right. Injured his neck, and then this year is his first year coming in healthy. But Hopefully, knows the offense right. We did see uh, from hearing, we've heard from some people who mm-hmm. were at OTAs that he was making some really big yeah. plays yeah, yeah, and yeah. looking good for the Dolphins. So, I mean, you'd like to think that maybe it's finally clicking, right? I think he, Eric Azucanma and Jody Fortson were like the the guys of OTAs. Yeah. yeah. Which it's still early. Dude, I'm, <laughs> I don't even want to say it, but, you know, I always say super excited, but Jody Fortson and Eric Azucanma bring much needed length to this offense that we we didn't have all of last year which we tried to to replace Azukama last year you know that injury with a guy like Chase Claypool mm-hmm. but it, unfortunately he couldn't put it together either so okay so let's a, a simple question which unit on offense is going to surprise you do you think will be the biggest surprise this season is it the quarterback room in Tua is it the offensive line is it the running back room? Is it the tight end unit or the wide receiver core? I think running back. I think uh, if we can keep all of our guys healthy, I mean, come on, with Raheem Mostert, Devon A. Chain, Jalen Wright, I mean, come on. Like, if 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 our O line is is just able to block just a little bit better than they did last year, I and, and plus with uh, with Jonu Smith blocking at tight end and these other guys, Fortson, I think. Uh, I mean. McDaniel loves to run the ball. Yeah, that's yeah. what he did very well in San Francisco. Going back to them, I mean, I, and I think he's yeah he, he hasn't been able to get there fully with the Dolphins yet. I think that's the part that's missing. Okay, yeah, I I think mine's a, a two part answer, and it's it goes directly into what Anthony was saying. It's running the ball, and I think I think it's the uh, <clears throat> the offensive line that's going to surprise a lot of people because mm. you know obviously it's with consistency and and not being injured. But I think they're going to manage to, especially with Aaron Brewer and Isaiah Wynn, too. I think he's a good run blocker as well. I think if they can stay on the field, the run game's just going to take off. But I think that starts with the offensive line, obviously, right? Making the, the prop, giving, providing the gaps for the running backs to run through, right? And it's funny. I think Raheem Mostert, as soon as Isaiah Wynn went down last year, he wasn't having the same type of games he was having in the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it just goes to show a guy like that was contributing, like, heavily, heavily to the run game. So, if he can stay on the field, a better run blocker and Aaron Brewer as well, I think the offensive line is going to see, like, huge improvements this year. So I'm going to go, just for the sake of being different, I'm going to pick the tight end room. 
Yeah. I think oh, that's yeah. the new wrinkle with the Dolphins offense. Mm-hmm. Something that Mike McDaniel probably wants to make a staple. And going back to what you said about San Francisco and Debo Samuel, what about maybe making Jonu Smith yeah. more into that mold of what we see in uh, George Kittle? George Kittle. Uh, that's a- hey, you know, why not? <laughs> We could try. I mean, listen, I think uh, Jonas Smith is actually faster than George Kittle, but Kittle's a guy, he's a big frame. <laughs> Kittle's a, nah, and his run Kittle's blocking is, yeah. his pass pro on run blocking is fantastic. That guy's a, he, he prides himself on blocking almost more than he's receiving, and he's, he's, he's a, a beast, man. That's well, the, I think in the blocking arena, that's going to be more uh, Durham Smythe's. Hey, that's, that's one guy down the line that I would love for the Dolphins to trade for. And I know it's like, uh, how many names can you possibly have, but. You never know, man. I, I I do remember when McDaniel was, you know, coming here the year before that as well. I remember George Kittle had said something when he was signing his contract that he wanted to put a clause in his contract, basically saying, if I sign, and you need, you need to make sure that Mike McDaniel stays here on this coaching staff. That's crazy. So, so I mean, it was kind of like a joke, but it, it's like that's how much he loves him, right? And I know Debo Samuel loved him as well. But that's that's the common theme with Mike McDaniel, man. The players love him. They want to play for him. It was last season, too, that there was some talk of Debo Samuel joining the Dolphins, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but that's that's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's done. not going to happen. That's we don't done. need him, honestly. I'd rather what we George do, Kittle. Yeah, and what we do need to figure out is how to keep uh, Tyree Kill on this team, man. We, we just need to get that contract done. Yeah, Tyree Kill's asking shit. for more money now. and He looks like his main focus is staying in Miami. Yeah. And he seems pretty cool about it, but money talks, you know? I don't know, man. My New Jersey just came in, so he better stay at least a couple more years. It's <laughs> going right, right in the back of my closet <laughs> with all the other uh, Dolphin casualties throughout the years. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but we'll see. I mean, once again, the wide receiver room is jam-packed. So depending how he does this year, we'll, 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 we'll see how, how much money he gets. But he's definitely, the, to me, the best receiver in the NFL based on last year's performance. And I don't, I don't think he'll break that 2K mark he's been dying to reach, especially now with OBJ in the mix now and more more mouths to feed and, you know, probably a, a larger emphasis, in the, like, like you said, in the, you know, getting the ball to our tight ends, potentially running the ball more. Mm-hmm. I think that was a little cool streak we saw the last couple of seasons, but I don't think we, he might get there now moving forward, but we'll see. Okay, you know what? That actually brings us into something else that we were planning for the episode and it's the over-unders. Okay. So maybe we can get into that. And you can start with Tyreek if you want. Uh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, I had Tyreek Hill. Uh, and it was... What was it again? I think it's, you're, you're throwing me off. Now I think it's for over Tyreke. under the 1,800 yards. Yeah, so it's over under 1,800 yards. He had seven 1,799 last year, missing a game. So... Let's start with you. Do you think he's over or under 1,800 rec- receiving yards next year? I say, I well, I will say, Tua did very well last year getting the ball deep to him, but there were a few miss, miss throws. So having mm-hmm. that said, if Tua is able, able to lock that in a little better this year, he still has that potential because he, you know, he, he can go off for 250 yards any given day, yeah, mm-hmm. any given Sunday, really. You know, so it's the you know it's the, the potential is always going to be there, but realistically. I, I, I think he's under. Okay. Under. I think he's under. Kevin. Um, I, I, I'm going to say under because I think I think him and Tua have a great connection right now. There were a bunch of balls actually that he bobbled that he could have had very easily way over 1,800 True. yards, right? True. True. Um, mm-hmm. Also, with that extra game, if he would have played without those balls that literally were layups, like he had them in his hand cupping it and he would just drop, he would. I, I feel like he would have made 2,000. Honestly, um, but I'm saying under because I do think we're going to have a way more balanced attack. I think it's going to be like, well, obviously Odell, Waddle. There's so many people that we're going to get the ball to. And and last year, it was a lot easier to see why you would only go to Tyreek Hill or Jalen Waddle. Th- those are the only guys really out there that should be getting the ball right in the passing game. So I think it's a balanced attack. I say under just because, you know, the ball needs to be fed to these other receivers. So, yeah, I'm also going to say under. I think the. So, so all emphasis, three under. Yeah, I think I'm going to say the, the emphasis to the run game and the tight end room mm-hmm. is going to make. Tyreek's not less important. He's still as important to the offense, but.
but he's going to be used more as that decoy, bring him out downfield, go all out. Yeah. Which, which, which will be good, man. We're yeah. gonna, we're gonna. There's so many things that we've done this off season that's gonna preserve the running back room, the, the tight end room, the wide receiver room. You that's know what another I'm great point too. Yeah. It's it's no use in having Tyreek break these records if by the end of the season he's, he's falling apart. Yeah, man. And that's, you want this guy for, ready for the playoffs, healthy. Y- you can't have him, just force feed the ball to him. Well, that's exactly what happened last year. These all these guys in the, those last couple of games, the last few, it was like the last three, and I'm including the wild card game. Everyone was fucking hurt, and they, even when they were playing, they were hurt. Like Tyreek Hill was not right. Jalen Jalen Waddle wasn't right. I actually heard Omar Kelly saying. Uh, the same week of that wild card game that Tyreek, I mean, uh, Jalen Waddle played, he said that Waddle was like a mess. He was limping all over the field. That they probably injected him with, with some stuff to even get him out there. So, dude, what's the point of all these these yards and all that if by the end of the season you're broken down? And that's when it really freaking matters. So let's find a way to preserve these guys, not have them gas out in the beginning of the season, get hurt, and, you know, roll right. them out in the, at the end of the season. So Tyreek Hill, under 1,800 yards. Yes, all three, three of three. us. <laughs> all, um, right. all right, how about a Chan? 1,000 rushing yards. I think he could definitely do it. He's a, He's got that Tyreek factor. Yeah. You know, he could break mm-hmm. out for over 200 yards in any, any given day. He's got that breakaway speed. Um, I think, yeah, I think over. I want to say so. I think him and Raheem Moster will definitely take that leap this year. And Moster, unfortunately, does have that history of missing time every now and then, even though I like I what he did last year. I think, I think he was a big part of our success last year. But let's see. I think over, though, for sure. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, HN over for me. Just the fact that he had 800 rushing yards in 11 games last season. I, I think it's just that's almost a layup. Like right. he's gonna do it. He's gonna have those breakaways like you were talking about. Right. I mean those nasty games that he's rushing for two hundred yards, you know. So All it's right, gonna let's, happen. Let's do this because I'm also gonna go over a thousand yards. But to make it more interesting, interesting, mm-hmm. let's do a thousand rushing yards and five hundred uh, passing yards or receiving yards. Him over under yeah aging under under. I don't think he gets both. Okay, so Anthony, what do you think? You know, the more I think about it, and then you start thinking about Jalen Wright too, potentially getting you know getting into the fold. I still like A Chain's uh, breakaway speed, though. I think that makes him an X factor in every single game for mm-hmm. sure. But getting over 500 yards passing, I mean receiving, that's that's tough. I'd say 300 tops. Okay. 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 Now, if he if he takes on the role that we want him to take on, and he can actually excel in that role, you would like to think that he would get more than 500, right, or around there. Which would be fantastic, but that's that's just him being on another level, taking on like almost like a Tyreek Hill climb as as far as being a wide receiver, you know? You know, I guess something that is going to be really important for this offense is that nobody is a workhorse. Mm-hmm. It would be nice. A lot of our players... That's why it's hard to, to guess that one. A lot of our players, like we don't have big body dudes. Yeah. Like even our running backs are smaller backs. Our receivers are smaller receivers. Our quarterbacks are smaller quarterback. Going into the offensive line, now our center is one of the smaller centers in the league. So yeah. we're a smaller team overall. <laughs> it's not good in football, guys. We start, we, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> we start out hot because smaller guys are usually more athletic and they can move around, but they're also more frail. And you can see that with the Dolphins at the end of the season. It kind of makes sense. Right. And it sucks because that was like the narrative last year too. Like the Dolphins are small. They're not going to hold up for the whole season. And it kind of showed at the end of the season it's like yeah, i guess they were right you know yeah which sucks you know but hey man look if, if we can manage to share the load share the load distribute the, it distribute it evenly or you know some games this guy we're gonna rely heavily on this guy and then the next game this guy i don't know how they'll do it but they got to figure that that out so all right what's the next over under i will right, we'll stay in the running back room mm-hmm. um so Raheem Moser, we know what type of year he had last year. Right. 18 rushing touchdowns. Uh, do you think he'll get over or under uh, 15 rushing TDs? I think I think 15. I think we should change that number to 10. 10? Okay. Because 15 is still very good. Yeah. And it, 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 even if you get to 12, it's still very good, right? Mm-hmm. I, I think this year he'll take a step back in that department. I really feel like having more tight ends in the space – 
you know, we didn't have any t- any any touchdowns at the tight end position last year. Okay, I think that's going to change this year. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and once again, adding Jalen Wright, Devon A. Chain, I, I feel is probably the better running back in that room, mm-hmm. might, based on just what I feel. I think most of has a better resume, of course, and he had, and he's. I think he, they played just as good last year, to be quite frank. But uh, yeah, I don't. I, I don't think he'll get over ten touchdowns this year. I don't think so. Okay. I I would I would agree with that. I think last year he was out of his mind, <clears throat> but he did have a million opportunities at the at the one yard line, right? And which dug into Tua's you know right. touchdowns potentially passing touchdowns. Right. So that's another reason why Tua you know didn't really have that many last year. He had twenty nine, right? Passing 29. touchdowns. Yeah, yeah, I believe it was twenty nine. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's way under. Actually, I, I think I'll agree with Anthony. I think it'll even be under ten. Right. The only reason why I put fifteen is because you know he had. A crazy a number last season. year. I didn't even want to match that, but you know, go a little under. I'm also gonna say under. Would you say under ten as well, though? I would. I would say under ten. And I think under ten is is actually a fair number because we're gonna have a chance. I think Jalen Wright might actually be more of that, you know, just, that bruiser back that's gonna go in there at the one yard line. I'm just hoping that or Jeff Wilson. I'm just hoping that or even Johnny Smith because <laughs> of that or Alec Ingold or Let's got see. Alec Ingold. I'm just hoping that the Dolphins do share the love this season. Yeah. Because these guys are smaller guys. And if, if again, it makes no sense having these guys break records if at the end of the season you can't compete in the playoffs. Yeah. So I'm just hoping they share the love. And for that reason, I'm going under 10 touchdowns as well. Well, that, that leads me into Tua then. Tua Tungvaloa over 35 touchdowns. The reason why that's important is because 29 last year, right? Mm-hmm. But Raheem Mostert was a big reason why it was only 29. Yeah, he so was Anthony, vulturing touchdowns. Vulturing, for sure. You know, obviously, we get all the way down there, five-yard right, line. Right, right, right. Raheem right. runs it in. Tua doesn't really get an opportunity to even throw it. So, right. what do you say, Anthony? I mean, so as much as I love Jonas Smith being added on here, he's never really been a huge touchdown guy. He's, a, he's no. that type of receiver, like, decent up blocking, very quick, very quick. He, he, he could pick up... You know 20 30 40 yards at a time because he's got that breakaway speed and he's able to slip away from that defense but i don't know i mean what's the number again for tua what uh 35 35 mm. yeah I, I would say he ends up on, ends around like 33 ish okay that's still not a bad number <laughs> so very good so yeah. under so still very under. good but 35 i don't think yet i don't think that, not yet not yet well i'm i'm gonna say over okay um and it's basically exactly what I said. If it wasn't for Raheem, you know, vulturing those touchdowns, I, I feel like Tua would have easily gotten into over 30, 35. I'm not going to say 40 because that's a that's a huge, you know, number. There was also a couple key drops in the end zone, man, like layups, like like including Tyreek. Just that one, just that one touchdown that I can rem- remember in that uh, – that Eagles game. Yeah. That Tyreek literally had it in his hands. He started celebrating before he even reached yeah. reached the goal line. And he just like, I don't know what happened there, but haunting he memory. dropped it. But yeah, so so I'm just saying, so from those 18 touchdowns, right? Which not all 18 were at the goal line, but the majority of them were. You give Tua like six of them, right? I, I feel mm-hmm. like he can do that easily and he will get over that. So this is a tough one for me. I want to say over. So bad. <laughs> but but say say what you feel though. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna say over. This is gonna be Tua's MVP season and he's gonna go for nearly four touchdowns. But wait, if oh, you actually God. think if you actually think that it's under, then say under, bro. Uh, it's it's you a, gotta you gotta tell them the, it's a the, hard number to reach, but but if if there's ever a time for Tua to do that, it's gonna be with this cast of receivers. Yeah. It's gonna be with this tight end room. These these running backs that were one of them being converted to a receiver potentially. So if there's ever a time for Tua to go over 35, it's gonna be this season. And we were a very pass happy offense last year, right? Mm-hmm. But you'd like to think the running game is gonna be way better this year. Mm-hmm. So that's gonna open up the passing passing offense. I, I think the passing attack is gonna be a lot more efficient. I think we're gonna get more yards out of Tua as well, and I I think that's gonna lead to to more touchdowns. Yeah. So, you know while. On top of that, it it was very scripted, right? We we knew Tyreek was getting the ball or Jalen Waddle. Dude, now we got so many guys on the field that 
you know, Odell's going to not, they're not going to pay attention to him or mm -hmm. John U. Smith. And, and these guys can break away also. As, so I don't know. I, I, I see that happening. So, but yeah. Well, I definitely think the running back room is going to make some noise this year. I really feel strongly about that. I think Mike McDaniel, I think that, I think that's always been his ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. um, he's never really liked putting too much pressure on his quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. you know, if you look at it, you know, his coaching historically, and uh, if you look back at to his decision making last year, I think he lacked a little bit in that category. Um, he had 29 touchdowns to 14 interceptions. Mm -hmm. I think the year prior to that, he was at 29 to eight interceptions. You know, yeah. so I, I, I think uh, McDaniel, like I said, he's gonna try to take as much pressure as he can off of Tua and just make him make the you know stick to those precision throws and just wait for those big home run plays to Tyreek whenever they come up or yeah. what. You know. Yeah, that's that, a good point too. That is true. Yeah, yeah, and it, there's going to be a lot more opportunities for that. I feel because it's just gonna it's gonna go down to the run game. They're they're right. not going to be able to play the same type of defense they were last year because it, it felt like every play was going to be a pass. You know, mm -hmm. right? So, right. All right. Cool. What's next? I mean, I, I figured let's just stay here with Tua either way. But five thousand yards over under, passing yards. <laughs> I think. Yeah. That's a that's a huge season, by the way. That's a really Let good see. season. That's so. the magic number. That's the magic number. I mean, last year he had forty. He was close. Five. Uh, forty six something. Forty six twenty four. Okay. Okay. I mean, I think he could do. Yeah. You know what? I think he could do five thousand yards. I yeah. Think over. I, yeah. Well, no, I, five thousand. I think is the max we'll get. Like, maybe like under fifty one hundred for sure. Uh, no way. Okay. okay. No way. But, but you do think he reaches year. five thousand at least. He has the potential to do it, but yeah, you know what? I yeah, I see. Over. Okay, he could do it. Okay, okay. yeah, I I, I think five thousand. I I think it could have even be it, it could have been achieved last year as well. I, I mean, think so. There were there were times that obviously we're blowing out these teams. Tua doesn't really play the fourth quarter. That's sometimes true too. Would be, I, what did he sit three fourth quarters? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's big. I well, mean, that's that's three. I mean, it's almost a whole game, right? Sitting right. out. Yeah. And I'm not gonna. I'm not saying Tua would have gotten almost 400 yards in a game, but right. there was there were other opportunities that he was sat in the third quarter as well. So, I mean, dude, think of, think about one game alone, the Broncos game. Yeah. Bro, we were destroying them. There was there was no need to even pass the ball at that point. Right. So, there were other other games as well, like we were talking about the drops and all that, which that's gonna happen. That happens to any quarterback. But yeah, I think he can definitely achieve 5,000. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over. And well, I think it's happening this year. I'm also going to go over. If Tua is going to be MVP, then he's going to need to have the MVP stats to go along with it. And if there's ever a time, like I said, for the touchdowns, if there's ever a time that Tua is going to do it, it's going to be with this unit. It's going to be with this team. Mm -hmm. Bringing in guys like Odell Beckham and Jonu Smith, having Jalen Wright there too. This is a good team. And, yeah, I think he gets over 5,000 yards. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, let's keep it in the passing attack, right? right? Jalen Waddle over or under thirteen hundred receiving yards. <sighs> I love Waddle. That's my boy. Yeah. I love seeing that penguin dance at the you know in the end zone every every Sunday. I just don't know. I mean, we're talking about Tyreek Hill a little earlier, right? Yeah. I don't even think Tyreek Hill will surpass fifteen hundred yards this year. I think wow. he'll, I think he'll max out at fifteen hundred. So giving so having you know those thoughts, I think you know. I could see Waddle get to 1,300, though, for sure. I could see him get to 1,300, but I don't know if he'll top that. I, I think Waddle might get more touchdowns this year. Yeah, okay. hopefully he does. I think last year he had three touchdowns. He had yeah. very little production there, and uh, I think you'll see an uptick there this year. He's got good hands in the end zone. Okay. So so you're picking under 13. Okay. I guess I have to say over because I think he'll get to at least 1,300. So okay. Yes, yes, okay. Yes. 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 Like thirteen oh five. Thirteen oh thirteen forty. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'll say over. You know, I, I'm I'm just considering the fact that he had a down year last year. Obviously, he was right. you know injured. He he did miss a few games. I think he missed three. Still still managed to get a thousand yards. I think if he wasn't hurt, and you know, coming into this year with all the other weapons, it's just gonna open up. His game as well. People can't really focus on him as much as they did last year as well. I, I would have to say over. I think he's going to achieve 1,300. He did it in his second year and in the NFL. So I think I think he'll do it again. I think he'll get more. Hmm. I'm also going to go over, and I'll follow it up with a, a hot take. 
I think Waddle's going to have more receiving yards than Tyree Kill this wow. season. Wow. You think so? Yeah. Wow. This you know, could, this could be a that's, thing. That, I, I think could that's very thing. possible. I think it's very possible. Huh. The, my question to you guys though is what do you have OBJ landing this year? Hmm. Oh. Because that could change things. Okay. Well, that, that can lead me into OBJ's over or under 500 yards. Oh, over. Okay. Over. That's an easy one, right? Over. I, my question to you is over or under a thousand yards. Okay. Uh. Well, last episode we talked about could the Dolphins be the first team to have three receivers to go for over a thousand yards? Can you put a, a yeah, thing yeah. Right up we'll here? add the graphic. Yeah. There's the graphic. So um the Dolphins could be the sixth team in NFL history to have three receivers go for over a thousand yards, something that hasn't been done since 2008 by the Cardinals, led by Anquan, Anquan Bolden. And Larry Fitzgerald. Right. So it has happened before. Mm -hmm. Three 1,000 yard receivers. What's the likelihood of that happening for the Dolphins? Whoa. And, and another thing, it doesn't have to be OBJ, it could be someone else too. Well, I mean, we're all, we're, we just all said that we have Tyre, uh, Tua Tagovailoa over 5,000 mm -hmm. yards, right? right? So that means mm -hmm. we got some guys that got a ball this year, mm -hmm. right? Well, we're going to need back, some production there. We're right? going to need some production, right? So I could definitely see. OBJ hitting a thousand yards this year. All right, so I so I like that. that you changed it. The over under a thousand. Yeah. I do like that. So you're you're over then. I'm yeah, I think you'll be like ten I don't know, ten thirty. <laughs> okay. Ten thirty. <laughs> I mean, considering like looking over his stats, twenty nineteen was his his last time that he got a thousand yards, right? But then if you if you start looking into the other years, it was just injuries injuries, right? So he was injured in twenty twenty. Then in 2021, he had the the still on the Browns, got traded to the Rams, uh, managed to get over 500 yards in that season. Even though all the games were there, I mean, it's a new new offense. They still had Cooper Cove. They had uh, what's this other guy? The other receiver that had Wood Woods Woods Robert Woods Robert Woods. Mm -hmm. There you go. So they still had a, a other receivers there, and he's just coming and learning a new system. Had to sit 2022, coming back from an injury in 2023, managed to get over 500 yards. I think if this system is just is very similar to the Rams, he already knows it. I think he's going to come in. He can come in swinging. He can know exactly what he has to do. So, yeah, I would say over 1,000 yards. I mean, if, if you just do just clean math, mm -hmm. 59 yards over seven over a 17-game season, that's 1,003 yards. That's, okay. that's a okay. layup, man. I feel like he could do that. I think he could do so that. So average 60 yards a game, and you're golden. And 60 you're golden. yards a game. That's and you know some, some games he's probably going to get over 100. Other games he's going to get like 30. So it's going to so bounce out, right? I don't see why the Dolphins can't do this with Tyreek, OBJ, and Waddle. But it's going to be predicated mainly off of injuries. And hopefully they can stay healthy. Would you say that OBJ has one of the better hands on the team? OBJ has the best hands on the, the team. Well, don't you think he's gonna get some more looks in the end zone then? Hell yes. yeah, the red zone. The red he's, zone. He's our, he's gonna be our red third zone. Third downs, key third downs are gonna the ball's gonna go his way for sure. I have him over five touchdowns this season. Damn. Okay. Wow. Damn, that's good. I think we could see him we get two or three. Our receivers are gonna ball. Okay, let me ask you. Th this is something that I wanted to ask um, in another episode, but whatever. I'll just shoot it here. Mm -hmm. um, do you think if he has that type of season, the Dolphins find a way to keep him on this team? No. No? No. I mean, mind you, I, I think OBJ, knowing how this he is. This is a one and done here. Flashy. He's you know, an assassin. I, I know he loves Miami. I'm sh I'm sure he's going to love it down here, but gonna want another he payday, needs to right? get paid. Yeah. He hasn't had a lot of luck the last couple of years, I think. I, I, outside of L.A. when he won the Super Bowl, and, but unfortunately got injured. I mean, he went to Baltimore, and Baltimore is not really known for having any, you know, great receivers or – yeah. Or, or or at least giving too much love to the receivers. I mean, I think I think in the last recent years, I think Hollywood Brown was probably one mm -hmm. of the better receivers they've had that made some noise. But besides that, they've had a lot of consistent now they solid got Zay receivers. Flowers coming up, right? Zay Flowers coming up, sure. But I I still see all those guys as like solid receivers. I think, but not great. Right? Yeah. And I I, I don't you know they, they've always liked putting more emphasis in the run game in Baltimore. So I think this year it's going to be interesting to. See the dynamic with, with the creative Mike McDaniel. Yeah, you know, on the fold. Let's see. I would hope if OBJ has a killer season that maybe he believes. Which actually leads me to another question with Tua. 
and his contract situation. But if if OBJ has a killer season, maybe he figures, you know what? Let me continue to add on to my legacy. Maybe the Dolphins fall. Hopefully, we don't fall. Maybe we win it all. Maybe he thinks, let's do it again. Let's run mm-hmm. it again. Let's Man, uh, let's continue to win. And but you'd like to think, right? If if he has a killer season, let's say we. I mean, this isn't a perfect world, right? We won the Super Bowl because this pass, this passing attack is like out of this world. He's getting over a thousand yards. These other guys are getting over a thousand. You'd like to think that maybe the Dolphins would also try to find a way to get him locked in here, right? He's had his injury concerns. He's had all this other crap, right? So maybe they're like, all right, bro, we'll give you like a three-year, twenty-eight million dollar deal. Maybe he's like, all right, bro, I'll do that, man. I don't really have, and we guarantee it, right? Yeah. We we find a way to do that. He's like, I don't. I don't have any certainty that my legs are going to hold up or anything else. I'm constantly injured. You know, I'm going to sign that. Maybe the Dolphins take the gamble there. You, you know, never that, know. That part's a mystery because, you know, everyone has their own preference when it comes to money. Yeah. You know, we have the whole Tom Brady. But, I mean, you that. do see in his in his interview with the Dolphins, he kind of said, like, I'm in a different stage in my career. Like, he, he's kind of admitting, he's like, bro, I'm not about, like, being – the lead guy making all this money, which, I mean, obviously, if he gets paid, like, if he gets offered a lot of money, he's going to take it. You know, you're going to get your last opportunity with that contract, but maybe maybe he is in a different place. Maybe he wants to stay here. Maybe this is home to him, so. Maybe. All all I can say is wide receivers are getting paid big bucks right now. No, Mm -hmm. you're right. So if, if if he has as good of a season as I think he will be having, I think, uh, I think he'll be gone. The only, the only thing is to, how much would that be predicated to the fact that he's playing with Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill? And will other teams take that into account and be like, yeah, bro, we're not giving you 15 mil a year because there's a reason why you you got this many receiving yards. Okay. And it's because all that attention is on Waddle and Tyree Kill. You know what I'm saying? Well, so- we can contrast that to what's going on with Tua and his contract situation and how that's like kind of stalled out now. Mm-hmm. How much yeah. of how much of Tua's Success. performance is because of Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle, and how much is it because of Tua? It's a lot of it is obviously you have two of the best weapons in the NFL, two of the best receivers, right? Right. But at that point, that is is almost irrelevant because, like we said before, this whole system is made for Tua. Mm-hmm. Like Mike McDaniel's system is perfect for a quarterback like Tua. So either way. Regardless of the fact that we have those guys and he's throwing to them, you get rid of Tua, we're not going to have the same production on this offense. Who are we going to get Brock Purdy? Like we, we can't get him. We can't get any other quarterback that's going to run this as well as Tua. So I don't think it really matters. Well, what's what if the Dolphins were to offer Tua $45 million? Because we know that the, the amount that they're offering him is not in the market of a Jared Goff or... Uh, what's this other blonde dude now? The Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence. You know, it's if it's not in that area, then what if they're offering him forty five? What would it? Wouldn't Tua consider like, you know what? I'm in a good place. I'm in Miami. We got no state tax. I'm playing with the best receivers in the NFL. I have an offensive coach in Mike McDaniel who adores me, mm-hmm. and we're just having we're putting on a show every Sunday. I'm not playing in the cold. Yeah, and. I have a good situation. Why don't I just take this 45 right now? I lock in some money. I know I have some injury history too. So, or does he does he take that route if, they, if he's offered that and say, yeah, you know what, let me get that 45. Or does he say, no, oh, fuck that. I'm going to bet on myself. I'm going to stay healthy. I'm going to keep grinding. But then even then. I don't think any of that really matters. It's the annual average doesn't matter. It's all fake money. Uh, the real money is the guarantees. Whoa. So so either way, uh, apparently Trevor Lawrence's contract, yeah, he's averaging $55 million a year, but he's really not getting $55 million a year. It's all fake money. And if you see his contract, which, uh, I mean, maybe we can make a graphic to break it mm-hmm. down, you would see that it's it's like, well, it's like Monopoly money, bro. And he's never going to see that type of money throughout his contract. And it's... It's just about getting him the right amount guaranteed. And if we can do it like over 140 million guaranteed, I think Tua, Tua ends up signing the contract. So, I mean, I don't know. I think, you know, guys really get their value once they perform in the playoffs. 
and two has yet to do that. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, Jared Goff, I, I believe, is somewhere slated between the fifty-three mil range. Fifty-three, yeah, right. I mean, hate it or love it, he's done, he's gotten things done in the postseason. You know, with, with more than one team now. You know, you, you could talk yeah, about the receiving core. You could talk about all kinds of stuff, but he's actually shown out. Two has yet to be be able to do that yet. You know, and until he actually performs in the postseason, he's not going to be able to get those big bucks. Even though, hey, I'll take forty five mil all day. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'll take forty five. <laughs> you kidding? Good money, bro. <laughs> Shit. And you know what? That forty five million <coughs> would be like the real number that he would get, no matter yeah. what. So even if it's a fifty five million dollar average, whatever, he'd probably get around there. So. I think that's a sweet spot too, but I mean, I don't know what the question was exactly, but you know, hopefully well, we get well, that well, done. Well, keep in mind, we're also in Florida, you know, no income taxes. That's a huge, huge it's thing. A huge win for mm-hmm. you know, forty-five mil here is like what you know, fifty-three. <laughs> yeah, over in LA, you know. So you're right, though. That's <laughs> that's a huge point, but also so. a, another huge point that Tua needs to take into consideration is that how much of your success is also due to Mike McDaniel and the the type of team he's built around you and also the scheme that he has put you in. Now what you're going to leave. And well, I mean, obviously it'd have to be that we don't offer him the contract. He plays it out. Maybe we give him a couple franchise tags and then he goes to sign somewhere else. He's not going to be the same player. I feel well, you know? that, that goes back to my point. Like Tua, I'm sure what they're offering you has to be over 45. Yeah. It has to be fair. Right. There's no well, way they're disrespecting well, him, right? Yeah, they can't be. I, I hope not. No. But still, also, if you're if you're telling him if <laughs> what we're seeing is that he's not in the uh, Jared Goff and Trevor Lawrence market, I it's I can see where two is saying like, bro, come on, like I'm I'm on that level. Mm-hmm. He's better than Trevor Lawrence. Like that's at least been proven. We know he does he doesn't have the attributes of a Trevor Lawrence, but. Yeah. His, his numbers say otherwise. And Jared Goff, he's put up similar stats. He just doesn't have the playoff wins. Hopefully that'll come with time. But to my to back to my original point, if what's the alternative here? You want to make more money to go in a worse into a worse situation, possibly? Because what if you end up with another guy like Brian Flores? Or nah, yeah. he's not gonna have the receiving core that he has. We know that for sure. He has to be scarred for life on that. There's that was, probably going to be traumatic. Yeah, him, there's so. there's going to be another team that's going to want to pay Tua, but he's not going to be. What if he ends up playing in the North? You know what <laughs> I mean? Like that's he doesn't. I think he's zero and what is it? Zero uh, and nine or zero and ten with in in games that are under forty five degrees. That's terrible. That's such a weird. Stop. It's a weird stat, but it's so stupid. <laughs> when it's under forty-five degrees, <laughs> when, when it's under forty-five degrees, <laughs> apparently, you know, uh, <laughs> they have stats or anything. Like how many wired. times they wiped their yeah, ass before a freaking play? I don't know. It's, yeah, it's stupid as hell. But, but, but yeah, yeah. I, I would say to a, you know, maybe it's his. It's remember you. you his agents also. This is. This is a performance they're putting on. So if they, they're they seeing people like Trevor Lawrence or Jared Goff getting these this type of money, yeah. if they can't get two of that kind of money, then other quarterbacks are looking at that agent saying, bro, you're a bum. I'm not going to sign with you. So agents have to make sure to do their job. But at some point, two has to say, bro, I just want a ball, man. Yeah, like bro. this is a good situation. This is right for me. It's athletes let's, let's get first, a deal done. though. That, they're known for this, right? They're known for trying to squeeze all this money out of these teams. I think right now with Tua, I think actually the type of person he is, and obviously I don't know him that well, but I feel like he's he's annoyed as hell on this. And you even see it in, in that one, in, um, it's not an interview, but whatever. It was kind of like an interview, yeah, whatever. The, an interview. So when he's talking, he's basically saying like, I don't want to be bothered every time you have an update. And he's talking about his his agents as well. You know what I'm saying? So I think he's bothered with them. He's like, bro, get the deal done already. I want to like get get rid of this. So I don't know. It's them though for sure. I mean, they're his uh, representation. So they're they're yeah. steering him in a certain direction. And it's true because then that trickles down to the other quarterbacks that you have signed in your in your agency. Yeah. They they're like, yo, if you can't get him that money, what are you gonna get me? Yeah, exactly. Shit. So, but yeah, hopefully they can get a deal done soon because. <laughs> This is something that's you don't want this happening while training camp is happening. 
So, I, I mean, I, I want to ask the question, but it, it's not even relevant at this point. But since we already did the over-under, mm-hmm. I wanted to ask, do you think Tua will match or surpass last year's production? Well, <laughs> going with our over-unders, yeah. <laughs> he's going to be yeah, well over. I mean, I mean, he's going to exceed bro. his last he's season. He's getting like 56 touchdowns Listen. and like 6,000 yards, right? If we think this team is as legit as you know, we've been, we've been talking about uh-huh. the last few episodes, he needs to play a lot better. Yeah. You know, and and not only him, the offensive line as well, the decision making on the offense for sure. But we need you know, over 5,000 yards and definitely, you know, 14 interceptions. That's a lot. That's almost a pick a game. Okay. We can't yeah. have that anymore. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, we won what, t- 10 games last season? I think it was 11. 11? 11 yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It was 11 to 6. Yeah. Okay. I, I think what, 13 wins? Yeah. Should be the, should be the new. Goal, I'd say that'd be nice, and that could have been easily achieved last year if we would have if we would have won that Tennessee game, right? Which we should have. <sighs> that was our game, man. And I feel like that Eagles game we could have really I, won. I bro. feel like we could have yeah. won the Eagles game too. That was rigged. And you know? even that first game against the Chiefs in Germany, we yeah. should have won that game. Tyreek Hill fucked us, bro. <sighs> okay, well let's just Listen, let's, man. Could've, let's should've, take those two and could have, should have, would have. <laughs> Oh, but that okay. Those two would have been thirteen. Yeah, I mean that's that's all. I'm Every saying. year is coulda, shoulda, was. Yeah, right? if if we would have had a healthy Tua, uh, when we were uh, facing the Bills, the year that that we had Skylar Thompson playing and almost yeah. Beat out. yeah, yeah, everybody, we all we all had a hard on saying, oh my God, if Tua would have won, you know, mm. playing that if we yeah. played that game, we would have won for sure. Who knows how far would have you know gone that off season, but. It is what it is. We'll find out soon enough. Bro, it just would have been, last year would have been such a different season if we would have, I know, would have, could have, should have, but if we would have beat the Titans, right? If we would have beat the Titans. Yeah, we wouldn't have faced, we would have faced the Bills. We would have faced the Bills in the first round. No, I don't think we would have. Yeah, we would have. No, that only would have been if we beat the Bills, right? So we would have had to beat, it would have been, it would have been the Steelers. Oh, okay. That would have been nice. Do you you (laughs) think we would have beat uh, Mason Rudolph and the Steelers? I don't know. Could have shared a word. <laughs> it didn't happen. Okay, so so last year would have been instead of that, it would have been a different situation. Now we're talking about the Dolphins finally getting a playoff win. Okay, now what is the the new uh, expectation? Let's win a couple. Let's get to the AFC Championship game, right? The Dolphins need to secure the AFC East in order to advance in the playoffs. That's gonna happen that's, this year. That's number one. That's gonna happen this year, in my opinion. I think the Bills are on the decline. I think we're. On the rise. The Jets are way overhyped. The Patriots are sleeping. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Jets are overhyped. You got Aaron Rodgers going to UFC events and other things, but he can't even make it to training camp hey, or OTAs, you know? you know? So, listen, Aaron ayahuasca. Don't, don't sleep on the boy. He's out here doing his ayahuasca right now, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> listen, yeah. He's old. But hey, let's see. I, I, I'm, as much as I hate the Jets, I'm a big Rodgers fan. So I'm curious to see. How he does the out Jets. there. Screw it. As soon as he signed with the Jets, I cannot stand Aaron Rodgers. Now he looks like a total prick to me. Like, dude, all that other shit, I'm like, yeah, he could do like this Aaron Rodgers. Now I see him like, bro, you are obnoxious, bro. I don't know who you think you are. And he's not with Olivia Munn anymore, right? Nah. Nah, yeah, he's nah, done. She's he's awesome. cooked. He'll be with a hot chick by the end of the week. Don't worry about that. No, nah, that guy, honestly, from a talent standpoint, probably one of the best ever. At quarterback, I, I would say top five at least. He was, he is, he is. I mean, I, or was, was right. Let's see, let's see how he plays, man. Let's see if he, if he could even, you know, play a season. You know, I mean, we saw him play what, one or two plays. Was the it was the first play, wasn't it? The the fourth it was like play. the third the f- or f- dude. It was like the first time he dropped back to make a pass. That's I what think. it felt like, right? I think I'm it, was, sure yeah. it was. So yeah, bro, he, <laughs> bro. His season highlights are him coming in with an American flag onto the field. He's That's it. That's Jet it. up, That's bro. It. <laughs> no, and and honestly, on that field, I I know we've talked about it, but on that field, bro, dude, notorious for taking freaking Achilles and and, yeah, and that's, ACLs, that's an bro. Insane so thing to just have in the NFL. Dude, honestly, if I were him, I mean, not, obviously not. I would I would have considered not playing again, bro. It's like, well, you're gonna step out there and, and and do the same thing, but there is a lot of money tied to it. I guess you just too do much it again. money, Bobby. Too much <laughs> money. I, you know, but, but but those are good points. So I mean, I think uh, just just to kind of go back to the Dolphins. I mean, mm-hmm. I think Tua is gonna 
have a definitely a better year this year. Last year was the first year of him coming off that big concussion mm -hmm. game and and actually being able to really you know at least show everyone. And he had put on all that size. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And then this season now he's trimming down, so he's probably adding another wrinkle to his game or getting back to scrambling a little bit well, more. Well, every, every year or two has gotten better, right? Something's got to give this year. So now this is the new wave of him doing something different with his body to get better, and I think it's going to pay off. I really do. Well, let's see. Let's see. We'll see. Uh, you know, our secondary has to step up this year. That's the only way we, we get to that next level. Mm -hmm. they yeah. I, I don't think they did enough last season. And this year, they're going to be put to the test. Let's see. Yeah, I... Our secondary definitely got better, in my opinion, too. Right, it did. The only the only thing is uh, with Jordan Poirier. I re I'm really curious to see how he's gonna be. I know I know he was a little slower last year. He took a bit of a step back. Still a very effective player, though. So I feel like he's at least an upgrade, right, to Deshaun Elliott. Oh, without a doubt. And, without and Brandon a doubt. Jones, right? Jordan Poirier, I believe. Uh, what was the Bills that drafted him out of Boise? No, it was the uh, the Browns. Browns. Oh, the Cleveland Browns. Browns. Yeah. That's right. I I remember when he when he was getting drafted, I really wanted him badly, but uh, he's 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 always played well in the in the NFL, and I mean, and I and I would definitely say it's an upgrade. We just got to see uh, how they how they put it all together, though. Oh, well, let's see what happens. <laughs> but uh, that's gonna make that's gonna be it for today's episode. Thank you guys for tuning in with us, and um, remember we still have the giveaway going on. But we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thumbs up. Peace.